Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you have joined from. And uh, this is SQL Server Indexes Level 2, the second webinar in probably three part series, because I'm not sure when I will do Level 3 and uh, yeah, uh, depending on the schedule. So yes, we have done Level 1 uh, just two weeks back, and this is Level 2. And here is the URL once again for all of you. In case you missed level one, you could go on that link and uh, click and subscribe. And it's a free video course, so you could just watch it for free. Now, some of you may have questions how to go about it. Well, very straightforward. Just click on the link. You can subscribe and then you have to log in into SQLmaestros.com. You become a member, you, start, you log in, and then you can go to video courses, watch the watch section and you can start watching. So um, yeah, um, in case you want me to give you that link as well, I can give it to you here. Okay, so uh, the subscription link and the watch link, both are available in the chat window now. If you have any questions, you have any issues and you're not able to kind of troubleshoot, you could just write to sqlmaestros.com. Uh, contact at sqlmaestros.com, that email ID. All right, welcome to level two. Let's get started. My name is Amit Bansal and I have been working with SQL Server for some time now. I am available and SQL Maestros team is also available on multiple social media channels, including Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, etc. Depending on where you are available, you could connect with us and stay up to date with our events webinars, newsletters, content, and, and a lot of different things. And, and of course, the, our YouTube channel, that's quite popular nowadays because I am I'm posting a lot of content on a regular basis. So feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. The link is up there in the chat window. The best way to know about me and my work will be to uh, is to ask chat GPT. So if you just go to chat GPT and type Amit Bansal SQL Server, chat GPT will give you hopefully some good info about me. Okay, so let's get started with level two. What are we trying to cover in level two? In level one, two weeks back, we talked about the basics of indexing architecture in SQL Server. We spoke about heaps, that is a table with no clustered index and how the pages are arranged. Then we talked about creating a clustered index. And then when you create a clustered index, how the pages are rearranged in a B3 structure. We talked briefly about the B3 structure as well, the root, the intermediate pages and the leaf level and how the leaf level pages are linked to each other. Then we talked about scanning and seeking using that clustered index architecture. Then we talked about the non-clustered index and how you can create only one clustered index because there's only one way how you can sort the data, but you can create multiple non-clustered indexes and they are separate storage objects. We talked about single column indexes, multi-column indexes. We talked about the include keyword option. And yeah, we also talked about again, non-clustered index scan, seek, the covering concept, etc. cetera. So a lot of stuff out there. So yes, you should make sure that you watch level one. And in case you have straight away come to level two today and you have no idea about level one, no worries. You could go and watch that again later on. Level two today, we are going to cover a couple of concepts. I had originally planned to cover quite a few things, but then when I was kind of putting all the demos and pieces together and I was like, look at this code here. So it was just getting overboard lot of stuff. So I was like, oh, looks like that's going to be overload of demos. So we, so I cut down a bit and not to worry what I've cut down, I would again cover up in uh, some, uh, in another webinar, maybe level three. So today we are going to talk about forward pointers. We're going to talk about page splits, uh, physical fragmentation and logical fragmentation. What I originally intended to additionally cover was uh, dynamic seek operation, the index union and intersection, et cetera. But yeah, as I said, we can do that in level three. So friends, we are all good to start. And before I start jumping onto the, uh, you know, the demos, no PowerPoint slides, no lecture, we're straight away going to do the demo. So, you know, when I say, as we, we, we talk, I mean, we, we are only going to demo, yes. 
So someone is asking questions. Okay, protocol questions. All questions in the Q and A panel, please. Please avoid using the chat window for your questions because it'll just keep scrolling up, and I will not have access to your qu questions. I'm only looking at the Q and A panel there. So please put down your questions in the Q and A panel. Please follow that protocol strictly. Friends, are we all good to go? Can you see me? Can you hear me? And you can see the screen. Yes, um, that is that you can put in the chat window. Yes, yeah, that you can type, and that's why I say chat window could just be for casual uh, conversations, but not for anything else. Okay, let's get started. First things first, right? Forward pointers. You know, I was wondering forward pointer was something that I could have covered in level one, but nonetheless, now we are slowly going towards performance tuning. You know, and and more specifically, index tuning. So a couple of these concepts are precursor to tuning with indexes and the different operations that have ha that happened inside SQL Server, the internal operations. And sometimes we are kind of not aware what goes on inside the SQL Server database engine. So uh, not a bad place to start talking about forward pointers. Now, forward pointers is a concept that only happens in a heap which means when you have a table and you know, there are a lot of reasons why you could just have a table without a clustered index and uh, uh, index tuning webinar could be a good, uh, you know, uh, destination where we can talk more about that. But I know right now, like we have 200 folks on this webinar. I'm sure some of you still have tables in your production environment that do not have clustered indexes. And you may have some good reasons for that. So forward pointers is a phenomena that happens only in uh, tables without clustered index, which is heap. So what exactly are, uh, are forward pointers? I'm using AdventureWorks 2016 for the purpose of demo. Let's create a table called employees, which has a few columns, employee ID, name, birth date, and salary. Let's go and create the employees table. Now we are going to insert some data into these Table. So I'm going to insert into employees values, Amit, and, uh, and a few default values out there, the date of birth, etc. And we are going to insert 2000 records. Let's do that. So this is going to just take a few seconds. Job done. We are going to insert another 1000 records into employees table. So I'm just put the name as Amit again. No harm. Let's do that once more. Now, remember, this table is a brand new table. There are no indexes on this table. So if we go and look into sys indexes system catalog and look up on this table called employees, let's go and see what the system tells us. System tells us that, okay, this table employees is a heap. All good. And that's why we have the index ID as zero. Now, we should go, uh, this is something that I always do uh, in any indexing demo is this DMV, SysDMDB index physical uh, stats is a very exhaustive and detailed DMV. I mean, it gives a lot of better data information about the current uh, object structure uh, and the table structure and the index structure, et cetera. So we are looking at this, oh, let's this run. So now you can see employees table, it's heap. And what I want to show you here is right now, the page count is 16 and you can see something called as forwarded record count, which is zero. So all that we did was to create the table, add a few thousands of records and right now, right now everything looks good. Now we are going to insert 2000 more records. So what I'm trying to do is add more pages and increase the size of the table. And uh, just one more check before we move forward. And this will bring us to the crux of forward pointers demo. So now you can see the page count has almost doubled up earlier. It was 16. Now we have 31 and forward record count is still zero. Now, what we are doing is updating this table, which is a heap, as you know, and remember that first set of 2000 records that we inserted, we had the name as Amit, and now we increase the length of this data type here, this attribute name and make it Amit gone crazy, which is like increase the size. Now, what happens behind the scenes is internally with the storage engine is 
with all these uh, inserts that we did, like 2000, 2000, 2000, we packed the pages, right? And there's not enough page. Remember, it's a, it's a small table with just four attributes out there. So the page is kind of packed. And now what we are trying to do is update all the 2000 records and increase the data size here for this attribute from Amit to Amit gone crazy. You know, what is this is uh, going to result into? So let's see. Now, if we go and look into this DMV again, physical stats, you will notice that you will have some value coming up for this attribute called forwarded record count 834. So what essentially has happened is in a heap now, when you have all these rows packed into the page and you try to increase the size of the, um, the value the data that is hold, held inside the attribute, there is no enough space for the expansion of the row. So you're trying to expand all the 2000 rows there, which match the value name equals to Amit, but there is no space on the page for the row expansion. So in a heap, what SQL Server does is it allocates new pages and then it will move the original row, the row from the original page to the new page. Yes, the entire row moves to the new page because obviously in the new page, you will have a lot of space and this page, this row gets moved from the original page to the new page. When it gets moved to the new page, a pointer gets added in the original place. And that is what we call as the forwarding pointer. So it points to the new location of the row. And now I know many of you have probably already started thinking from a tuning perspective and we'll just come to that in a moment. So the row moves to the new page and you have a forwarding pointer here. Now internally, if you examine the pages uh, on the original page, you will have a forwarding pointer, which clearly says, okay, this row has been forwarded and it will have the location of the page slot, et cetera. And on the destination page where the row was moved to, it will clearly say that this is a forwarded record and it will give you the original location of the record. If a lot of that happens, like this is nothing, okay? This is just like 800 forwarded uh, pointers, 800 uh, forwarded records. So some of, so there was some space on the page for the expansion, but when the page was completely filled up, then forwarded record count started increasing. And this could go really into thousands. Now, if this is a big number, it's huge. And this can only happen in heap. I'm, I'm constantly repeating that. From a reading perspective, when the storage engine really has to go and fetch the data, read the data, and you're reading record by record, think about what happens is the moment uh, the reading pointer comes to the record, uh, which is forwarded, it has to jump over to the destination page, to that new page, wherever uh, the record was moved to and has to read from there and come back to the original page. If a lot of that happens, of course, the reading time might slow down and which means in turn, the execution time of your select statement of your select query will increase. So this could hurt performance in some sense. But of course, it has to be a lot of data, a lot of forwarded pointers, given today's hardware and the uh, and the super fast storage uh, with small tables and small data, you really don't face the heat. But if it's huge amount of data and you have a lot of forwarded records, then of course you can see considerable difference.